Hey, and welcome gurus to this lesson, Azure Front Door Concepts. I'm Chase, one of your Azure training architects here at A Cloud Guru, a plural site company. And it's in this lesson that we're going to start off by describing what Azure Front Door is. Once we've covered that, we'll go into the components that make up Azure Front Door. We'll cover some Azure Front Door theory to help introduce us into understanding how Azure Front Door functions. We'll take a high level look at the Azure Front Door architecture. Then we're going to talk about the Azure Front Door SKUs that are available and the features they provide. And then we're going to wrap up this lesson with some key takeaways. So without further ado, let's start off describing Azure Front Door. Azure Front Door provides us high availability and acceleration across the globe, and it leverages Microsoft's global network to be able to provide us this load balancing using those edge locations that exist on Microsoft's backbone. Now, Web applications are the name of the game here. Azure Front Door is designed specifically for load balancing web applications at a global scale. So whereas Application Gateway provides us web application load balancing at layer seven, at a regional scale, Azure Front Door is our global load balancing layer seven solution. And another key feature of Azure Front Door is that it supports not just Azure services, but also those services on-prem. So we can use Azure Front Door for global layer seven load balancing in a hybrid network solution. And it also supports acceleration, caching, and security at the edge locations. Now on grand scale, how this traditionally would look is whenever a user wants to connect to a service, well, we'd have to take that long trip all the way to the region where the service exists to be able to get that content. But because Azure Front Door provides us those edge locations that we can use as part of the Microsoft backbone, we can provide closer locations for users to access to get into the Microsoft network and then over Microsoft's high speed connections within its own private network, the user is then able to quickly make a connection to the services where they exist going over that Microsoft backbone, making for content acceleration to the end user and also providing the ability to cache that content on those edge locations. Now, the components of Azure Front Door come down to just a few. We have our front end and this is the front end host or domain and it can be a custom domain name where traffic is going to be directed to for our global solution. And then we have a backend and in our backend, it's much like our other load balancing solutions. We have a backend pool of services, which are actually the solution, which is going to service our, the requests coming in over that domain. And again, it's important to understand that this can be Azure services or customer on premise services. And what connects this front end and the backend is routing. This will allow us to be able to take things from that front end host and make sure that they are routed to the appropriate back end resources. Now, whenever we're talking about Azure Front Door, the theory here is that, of course, we have regions where our services exist. For example, East US and West US. And here we have two public application gateways. And they exist inside the Microsoft backbone, which means they have the capability to be reachable over these edge locations. And these edge locations, when configured with Azure Front Door for our solution, provide an AnyCast IP for the solutions we have running in Azure via our Azure Front Door profile. Now, when Azure Front Door is set up, what it looks like when a client makes a request is first, they establish a TCP connection with the point of presence or that edge location. And then once they've established that TCP connection, they establish a TLS encryption. And then from there, they make the request to that edge location and that edge location forwards that request to that web solution running in the back end, in this case, that web application gateway. And then once it gets that traffic and dishes it out to those resources in its back end, it is then going to send the return traffic back and respond to that client. Now, once it's done this, that content will be cached on that edge location so that if another user comes along and makes a request for the same content, well, it's going to be a much quicker response because it doesn't have to go all the way back to that web application gateway. 
because it has cached that content on the edge location itself. These points of presence now have some of that content cached to be able to service requests more quickly in the future. And if a user were to come along and request traffic from a different edge location, well, this process would start all over again where they'd establish TCP and TLS, make a request, it would be forwarded to the backend web solution, and then the return traffic would then cache that content there. And additionally, we can have a web application firewall to be able to protect our edge locations and provide that custom or manage rule sets for those web applications that are behind our Azure front door. Now for Azure front door's architecture, this is what it looks like here. We have our front end endpoints, we have our routes, and then we have our origin groups. These are our back end pools, our back end resources. And in those origin groups, we have origins. And these origins can be those resources that exist behind the web application gateway and its total web solution. So that application gateway and all the resources in its backend would be an origin in that origin group. And we could have multiple origin groups with one or more origins. And again, these can be Azure services or they can be on-premise services, as long as we can reach out to them over a public IP. Now, then we have our front end. And the front end is going to be a provided Azure front door domain, such as x.azurefrontdoor.net. And we can add a custom domain to this using that mapping from that Azure front door and validate it with a custom domain. And we can have multiple domains, multiple front end endpoints here in our Azure front door profile. And then we have that middle routing component. And that is where we are going to configure which front end we're going to be routing for the origin group or URL we're going to be sending to, the caching settings for how we want to cache content at those points of presence, those edge locations, and the rule sets that we want to have on those routes. And when we take traffic from those front end endpoints, we establish what accepted protocol we're going to use between the front end endpoint and the route. And then we're going to forward that traffic using whatever forwarded protocol we have set. So HTTP or HTTPS in this case. And once it's forwarded, it's going to get forwarded to the origin group and specifically the origins running those web solutions in its back end. And to quickly refer back to the accepted and forwarded protocol, what we're talking about here is when we are establishing TLS offloading or TLS termination in the front end using that accepted protocol. And then if we want to establish that end-to-end -end encryption, we do that with the forwarded protocol. So we could establish HTTPS all the way through. And like with all of our load balancing solutions, we have the ability to have a health probe so that we can determine whether or not those resources running in the back end, and in this case, origin groups, are healthy and able to service our traffic. Now, we can have multiple front end endpoints going to a single route where we can then route that traffic to one or more different origin groups. And then we also could have multiple routes doing the same thing, routing traffic from domain front end endpoints to those resources in our origin groups. Now with Azure Front Door, we really have two SKUs here. We have the vanilla or classic V1 Azure Front Door that provides that global layer seven load balancing for HTTP, HTTPS, and HTTP2. And it provides us that split TCP based AnyCast IP protocol that we saw whenever we were going over the theory. And then it provides us the capability to have a health probe to check on our backend resources and the origin groups, URL path-based routing, multi-site hosting, cookie-based affinity, SSL offloading and certificate management, to provide that TLS termination and the end-to-end -end encryption. And it also provides support for custom domain names instead of using those Azure front door provided domains. And it provides us functionality for URL rewrite and redirection. And then we have the standard and premium V2 SKUs. Now these SKUs give us all the classic V1 features, plus it provides us CDN optimization and that's how we get that static and dynamic caching of content at the points of presence or edge locations. And it also provides us enhanced traffic analytics, 
and it provides us the capabilities to have web application firewall custom rules for standard and premium v2 instances of Azure Front Door. Now to show the differences between the standard and the premium v2, we really have to understand the key thing here is that static and dynamic caching of content when comparing it to classic v1 and those WAF custom rules. The differences between the standard v2 and the premium v2 are that standard v2 gets all the classic one v1 features plus CDN optimization, that static and dynamic caching, the enhanced traffic analytics, and the WAF custom rules only, whereas the premium v2 gets all of the features from standard v2, but it gets additional WAF features, bot protection, it also gets Azure private link endpoints, and it gets Microsoft threat intelligence. So the key difference here is v1 is our vanilla, standard v2 is our CDN content caching optimized SKU, and then we have premium, which is our security focused SKU providing those additional WAF features and Azure private link endpoints. Now, with all these Azure front door SKUs, it can be difficult to visualize the differences here. So I'm going to show you this Microsoft documentation image here that clearly illustrates the key differences. And I apologize, the quality of the image, it was difficult to get a high quality image of it. So you may have a difficult time reading the finer details on the bullet points if you're looking at this on a mobile device. However, the main thing I'm trying to illustrate here is that the Azure front door has that vanilla classic V1 SKU, and then it has the standard V2 and premium V2 SKUs, which are really just composite services of Azure CDN, Azure front door, and Azure web application firewall. And you see the difference between obviously the standard V2 and the premium V2 is either we have a delivery optimized solution or a security optimized solution. So now that we've got those SKUs covered, we're gonna wrap up with our key takeaways here. Now, as always, when thinking about what we're going to select for our load balancing solution, we have to think about at what layer we're trying to load balance and whether or not we want to balance regionally or globally. And as we learned with Azure Load Balancer, we can balance at layer four regionally and globally. With Azure Application Gateway, we learned we can balance layer seven traffic regionally. And as we're learning now, Azure Front Door is our layer seven global load balancing solution. Now, with Azure Front Door, the things I want you to take away is that the purpose of this solution is to provide that global layer seven load balancing solution. And it supports public IPs and public DNS. And it provides also the capabilities for multi-site hosting where we have multiple web applications running in its origin groups, those origins that service our requests. And the components that make Azure front door are that front end endpoint, which equals that Azure provided domain or that custom domain that we configure and then we also have the origin groups, which are those resources that are equal to what we commonly refer to as backend pools. Those origins inside of those origin groups, which are equal to those backend targets from our backend pools. And then those routes, which are those things that determine what rules we'll use to guide that traffic from the front end to the appropriate origin groups and origin resources. Now, the other thing to take away is the difference between the SKUs. We have that Azure Front Door Classic, which is our vanilla SKU that is just Azure Front Door bare bones. And then we have Azure Front Door Standard, which is a composite service that is CDN optimized using a composite of Azure CDN, Azure Front Door, and Azure WAF. And then the Azure Front Door Premium V2 SKU that is that composite service that is security optimized. All right, gurus. So that covers all the key takeaways for this lesson. Thanks so much for joining me in this lesson, Azure Front Door Concepts. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where we're going to dive a little bit deeper on the Azure Front Door components.